You're listening to the Allied Health Financial Podcast, evidence-based finance education for allied health professionals. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Allied Health Financial Podcast. I'm Giacomo, and as always, I'm joined with my good buddy, Ryan. How are you doing today, Ryan? Things are good. Things are good, except for how much it cost me to fill up my gas tank on the way to work today. Yeah, you got a, a nice shiny new car and you're uh, you're feeling the effect of that, that inflation on those gas prices, are you? Yeah, I mean, thankfully these days, cars are a little bit more fuel efficient. The cylinders are four instead of six, so it's not too, too bad. But I'll tell you, it's when it gets close to $1.50, it, it definitely hurts a little bit. Yeah, I can tell you I'm in the exact same boat with gas prices and it's not It's not just the price of gas. This is happening with everything. Inflation is really taking over right now. It's heating up. And we're really feeling those effects in in really everything that we buy. Yeah, absolutely. From groceries to car tires to, you know, pretty much everything that you buy on a day-to-day basis, the cost of living is kind of going up. And so let's talk a little bit about inflation today because it is starting to go higher than it has been in almost 20 years. And if you don't know what we're talking about, when we say the word inflation, there is a blog post and a podcast that we've done about this previously. As always, we'll link to that in the show notes. Um, But Ryan will dig into that a little bit more as we go forward. So let's start with this, Ryan. What is inflation? Yeah, so as we mentioned before, inflation is, simplistically put, the rising of prices over time. Right, so you'll, you'll hear, you know, Iceberg lettuce used to cost this much back in my day, or it used to cost five cents to go to a movie. That's inflation at play. The price of doing something 20, 30, heck, even five years ago was a lot less than what it is now. So why do they call it an inflation rate? Inflation is expressed as a percentage. So as you mentioned, that iceberg lettuce used to cost X and now it costs more. Now, Over the last 20 years, as we mentioned in that previous blog post, we've kind of been in this golden age of inflation. The cost of living and the prices of things in general have gone up about 2% for the last 20 years or so. And this is a normal thing, right? You want your money to be worth more than it was in the past. We definitely don't want it to be worth less because that's known as deflation, which can be a very dangerous state for the economy. Very recently... Inflation in Canada just hit 4.4%. And as we mentioned, that is higher than it's been in almost 20 years. It's up 4.1% from August, its highest level since February 2003. And that's, that's significant, right? That's more than double what the inflation rate has been for a long period of time. So a lot of people, like we talked about earlier, are feeling these effects in things like buying gas and buying groceries and those sorts of things. So Everyone's being really hit hard by inflation, but how does it affect us in our day-to-day life? So in the day-to-day life, as we've been talking about, it does hit you when you go and purchase things. So according to Stats Canada, gasoline was the biggest inflation driver this past month. Prices at the pump went up almost 33% compared with a year ago. Food prices have gone up about 4% in the past year. The price of meat specifically almost 10%, and the cost of housing climbed by 5%. Now, the cost of housing, if you've been paying attention, feels like it's climbed about 10,000%, but everything is up. So no matter what, wherever you go to purchase something, it's going to cost you a little bit more than it did in the past. Right. And if we take gasoline again as an example, your money today at a gas pump is technically worth 33% less than it was a year ago. You're getting 33% less gas. So that's a way to think about it kind of devaluing your money a little bit over time. Now, why is this happening right now? It's a really good question. And we'll start by saying that we are not economists and everything is theoretical in nature. Nobody's 100% sure why anything is specifically happening. But the hypothesis that we like best is that during the pandemic, the economy went down. But unlike a typical economic downturn, consumer spending stayed relatively similar and this was for a number of reasons firstly more jobs were kept and they were also had serb to help people out with their day-to-day expenses people kept buying but companies started to produce less now it started to catch up 
as you are buying more and the companies are producing less, you're starting to take away from their kind of reserve stores. And now we've kind of hit a standpoint with less supply and more demand. We now have higher prices. This combination of surging consumer demand and global supply chain issues, we get product shortages. And you hear that a lot nowadays speaking to people. It's, oh, the supply chain. Oh, the supply chain. It's It seems like you know, it's it's hard to get some consumer goods. You think about driving by certain car lots, and there's no cars parked in a in a dealership's parking lot. There's almost no cars for sale, and you hear it's because of you know computer chips aren't available, so they can't produce cars. So you can kind of see these effects in day to day life for sure. Now we kind of have an idea of maybe why this is happening, but who is being hurt the most by this rise in inflation? So when inflation goes up, there's a few particular groups that are hurt more than others. And the first group are those living on a fixed income. Now, this makes sense intuitively. If you have $75,000 coming in per year, let's say you are on a retirement fixed budget, but the cost of living is going up, then your money now is essentially worth less. So if you are on a fixed income, inflation tends to not be a great thing. The second group are those who are looking to make a large purchase. And a lot of the time, whatever entity is looking to loan you that money will look at the inflation and say, your money is going to be worth less. It's going to be harder for you to make the payments. So if you're looking to buy a house, inflation is a bad thing. The last group who is really hurt by inflation are those who are holding on to a lot of cash. And we will talk about this more in just a second. Right. And that that totally makes sense, especially for the the fixed income crowd. It's, you know, if you as simplistically as you can get, if you budgeted three hundred dollars a month for groceries and now that three hundred dollars does gets you half of the amount or, you know, let's say 80 percent of the amount of groceries it used to, that's not going to cut it anymore. But you're on a fixed income. You're not generating any more income. So you have to look at either cutting corners or changing what you buy or that sort of thing. So that that definitely makes sense. Now, you know, those with a fixed income are not the only people that have savings. I mean, we talk about things like emergency funds and all that kind of stuff. So what does this inflation rate change mean for for your savings, for my savings, for, for anybody's savings, really? When it comes to an emergency fund, we have always preached at Allied Health that we want you to keep that emergency fund as liquid as possible. The best case is cash, and that prevents that money from being exposed. If it is invested, it could be subject to an economic downturn. It could be worth less. So we want you to keep it in cash. Now, if you are a big saver and you like high interest savings account, which as of late would not have been a good thing because interest rates are at all time lows, inflation only makes cash worth less. This really headlines the importance of investing your money. When your money is invested, it is not cash. It is equated to owning different parts of different companies. So as inflation goes up, the value of your money also goes up. Now, if it sits just in cash in your mattress, again, like living on a fixed income, it's actually worth less. Having your money invested is the best way to go during a period of high inflation. Now, we are also at a very unique standpoint right now because Inflation has gone up. Prices have gone up. However, the interest rates have not yet gone up. This means it really hurts to have your money in a high interest savings account because that high interest savings account is paying 0.5 to 1% maybe. And your returns in the market can, as we typically say, you can hopefully do 5% per year if you average out over the years. Having your money invested keeps it up with the rate of inflation by investing it in different companies' value. Right. And that that completely makes sense. I mean, most people will tell you that that 5% estimate is probably pretty conservative. A lot of people will use 8%. So if your money is invested in a low fee ETF, and you're getting back 8%, you're right now beating inflation by, let's say 3.6% or 4%, right to round up. Right now, if you look at one of the, the big banks, even if you have up to $1 million or more invested in one of their high interest savings account, you're earning 0.05%, which means that you're you're basically losing 4.4% of your money every year 
to inflation. So like you said, Ryan, like some of these accounts need to stay fairly liquid because you, you might need access to them, right? Like your emergency fund. But if the rest of your money that's sitting there for your retirement is just literally just sitting there and being devalued by 4% every year right now, that's a bit of a tough pill to swallow. So this is really something that's super important for people to understand right now, for sure. Absolutely. And the Bank of Canada has said that it is going to start to increase those interest rates, but they're going to be nominal increases, right? 25 basis points, 50 basis points. It's not going to be big. So it still holds true. And the reason the government does that is to help curb inflation. People start to save their money. They stop spending a little bit. But to have your money invested right now will help. Now, there are times when you can't have it invested if you are looking to make a large purchase. And we totally understand that. It is the unfortunate way that life goes sometimes. But to the best of your abilities, if you can take it out of a high interest savings account that you don't need and maybe keep it up with the market, it may be in your best interest if that money is accessible and not necessary to you in the short term. Definitely 100%. You know, as we always say, the biggest thing about personal finance is that it's personal. So make sure that you're taking time to think about these decisions, speaking to someone who knows what they're talking about and is a fiduciary advisor so they have your best interests at heart and make sure that you're making the best decisions for you and your family right now. Thanks for taking us through this today, Ryan. Really appreciate it. I know I learned a lot. Uh, looking forward to, to talking about this a little bit more when maybe the inflation rate uh, goes back down to that 2% that we like. If you have any questions for us about this podcast or would like to suggest topics for future episodes, please use our contact page. You can also email us directly. Don't forget to rate and review this podcast and check the link in the description for the show notes. Thanks for listening.